Hey everyone, this here is the LEGO Walt Disney Tribute Camera. This 811 piece set cost me $100 US and I built it live with the wonderful community over on Twitch. This set comes with three exclusive minifigures plus two exclusive new animal, well animated, animal molds. And this is a whole side build that we'll look at later. I figure one of the first things I might as well do is give you a quick look at some of the cells of this exclusive vinyl piece that's included here to represent some animation cells on a continuous strip of film. This is a beautiful piece, has a limited number of colors to it, but it takes you through a large number of memorable Disney features going all the way back to uh, Steamboat Willie. And these are just in a reverse chronological order. And the instructions give you exact references to each one if you don't know what each one is. And that's just wrapped around the entire build. The tripod here has a nice spreader at the base. You do have to be very careful when building this to make sure that the orientation is correct here. But otherwise, the legs are built identically with the suggestion of being able to extend them out. But you know, all of this is completely static, including the angles of everything. But it looks very nice going all the way up to the head here. Yeah, really nice, really nice shaping. Unfortunately, you can't change the, the pan and tilt here. Like it, it looks like it, it almost feels like it can be uh, reoriented, but it can't. The way, to the, the way that it's built is very secure. Very unfortunate about that blue pin. Once again, the, the blue pin phenomenon strikes something old, something new, something tan, something blue. Always with Lego. Uh, other than that, you know, nothing is really breaking your immersion here. You've got the, the winding handle on the side and then the film canisters up top represent the, the 100, uh, you know, the 100th anniversary celebration logo there. You can easily remove the one here. And then if you want to, um, you could potentially take off the, the white tiles here, but I think just leaving them on, as long as you don't have the, the one here, it really looks more realistic. This whole camera is really nice. It also has an interior, it has interior detail to it, but I like how the different lenses are, uh, are, are put together. Each one of them actually has a, a clear piece at the end to, to represent some glass. The bellows are adjustable, so you can bring this in and out and you can choose between the different focal lengths. So you've got three different lenses here that can be swapped. Unfortunately, the bellows only works for the longest focal length there. So you want to just pull that off entirely in this case, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, just doesn't quite work right. But overall, it's, it's nice to have those there. I wish that you could get just a little bit more immersed with it, with everything connecting up well. But the shaping here is very nice. The whole thing goes together well. But most importantly, what you don't see is how it's built on the inside to do this. That sound is everything. It's so good. I love it. Unfortunately, you can open things up to see that. And when you do open things up, you'll see a lot more than just that mechanism. Look at that. It's an animator's drawing station. So they've got their desk there that's in a semi upright position, the dark green colored chair. And of course you can put something onto the desk. There's, there's one thing that's included that's, that's attached to one of the other uh, side builds right now that we'll look at in just a minute, but there's a lamp up above and on the side on the opposite wall, you can see the mechanism for the sound. It's super simple. That's it. And then once this is closed up because of the box shape, it changes the quality of the sound. There's no other detail in there. But you know, this is this is a nice touch. I dare say the camera looks better from this side simply because you're not seeing the 100 quite so easily. And again, you can just pull this off. The, the one portion of it makes it more believable. But you know, I mean, this thing, it's nice. It's it's very charming. It looks classic. I think that it captures the subject matter very well. It's very displayable. Has you know, just it's a lot extra going with it beyond just the part count. The side build acts as a display stand for all the included figures, but when I take those off, you can see it's built on a clapboard and it is able to actually clap. But all the other stuff there is a whole other thing. This is a multi-plane camera setup, something that the Walt Disney Company 
really moved forward as a technology. They did not invent the technology, but they used it to great effect. And inside of there, you can see how it works because Lego has included three separate printed pieces, printed one by four by six window pieces that go into separate frames at different heights. So here you've got the sky and moon. Here you've got some of the, the the background and, and main mat, and then here you've got the foreground layer. Unfortunately, the way that this is set up, they, they don't give you a really good view of it. So this is a mirror on top. The idea is that with this configuration, the camera was horizontal and the mirror was used to you know, rotate the image into the camera. But this really needed to have a, a hollow base so that you can let some light through or a white base down there, just something to let you be able to just appreciate this more. It's three separate exclusive prints that are very, very nice. I actually enjoyed this more before I put it together, interestingly. Here are Dumbo and Bambi, and I think that both of these are done really, really well. Just very nice shaping. The, the designers for animals, the part designers for animals, I think do a really good job of capturing their, their stance and you know, getting an iconic pose. Also the production work on both of these is very good. Each of them is dual molded. So for Dumbo, the red collar is its own color of plastic. The hat is just painted on. Uh, similarly over here with Bambi, all of the light nougat color, the old light flesh color, including the spots, the little fuzzy tail there, insides of the ears, around the eyes, and the snout, all that is its own color. And then the tuft of darker hair on top is painted on, which is also done very well. So just very high quality stuff. These are highly desirable in and of themselves. I found it to be very interesting the way that the dual molding worked out for Dumbo here. The inner, just the tube uses the red color, that secondary color. It's, yeah, it's just, you know, just, just different curiosity. Nothing, uh, I have no worries about this uh, breaking or anything. Everything's perfectly strong, but yeah, these are nice. On the left is the first ever official Lego Walt Disney figure. And I don't know, to me, it just doesn't look like Walt Disney that much. Maybe most of when I've seen him on film has been when he's older or something, but yeah, I, I see, I see J. Jonah Jameson before I see Walt Disney there, just, just myself, but I'll accept it. I can definitely accept this as, as a, you know, the official figure and all. It makes it very, very collectible. The sketch there that's starting to be inked in, of course, can be placed on the animator's uh, desk and table inside of the, the camera itself. And this is the latest color of pen from Lego, the dual molded friends pen here, just in silver and gunmetal gray, much more, much more generic than uh, colors they've used before. There is an alternate face I'll show you in just a minute, but then these are new variants of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, uh, relatively early, not the earliest, but relatively early with just monochrome or black and white based expressions of those characters. These are the only leftover parts, which includes an extra one of those pens, and there were no stickers used in this set. Again, I paid $100 US for this 811 piece set. It is 100 euros, 90 pounds UK, 130 Canadian dollars, which is approximately $95 US. Do I feel like I got a, a decent deal here? I, th I think it's all right. I think it's all right. There's a lot of really special stuff here. You know, the, the getting the new molds is, is a big deal. Um, very all collectible figures. The, uh, the multi-plane camera setup with the three separate large exclusive prints was really, really nice. This film strip is super, super nice. This is collectible in and of itself. This is, I thought this was going to be my favorite thing, but I think I might actually like the multi-plane camera planes individually. Not so much how that they're how they're set up here. I feel like this doesn't do as as much justice to the thing as as it should. I think I actually might like those pieces better though. This is brilliant. The this is so good. It's, yeah, it's a little bit wobbly, but I'm not worried about anything falling apart. I do wish that I could adjust uh, just the, the the pan and tilt a little bit. But all in all, I, I think most of this is is done really well. And funny note about the the camera setup here, the little mini build. In the instructions, Lego says that this depicts a scene from an animation called the Old Mill. But it doesn't. 
I went and watched The Old Mill. You can watch it. It's all over YouTube and stuff. for free. It, it's not from there. So then I went and looked to try to find what it actually is from, since Lego got it wrong. And I found where Lego got their information from. It was one Reddit post. There's literally a Reddit post where somebody incorrectly says it's from the old mill. So when you see Lego getting stuff wrong, you know, objectively wrong, whether it's minifig designs or uh, marketing blurbs, <laughs> descriptions and things, that's a little bit of evidence of how it sometimes works. <laughs> There's one person who does a Google search and they find a result on Reddit. And that is the source of information that they use. It's so bizarre. As far as I can tell, it was actually a, dis a bespoke scene that was drawn both in 2D and multiplanar like this for a 1957 uh, little documentary that Walt Disney uh, himself narrated to talk about the, the process, which they had been using for over 20 years by that time. A little bit of, a little bit of exposition of, of their innovation, which they didn't invent. The, the general idea of having multiple multiple planes uh, like that, but they definitely took it to a whole nother level, literally and figuratively, and, and many levels at that. But anyway, just fun, random, weird aside stuff. Overall, I'm very happy with this. Very, very happy with it. And I'm even okay with the price for the, for the stuff that's here. How much of it is really nice. Nothing is particularly done bo uh, poorly. Uh, yeah, so. This, this is what, well, except for that one pin right there, except for that. This is what I like to see for a premium European toy product. Some, some high end stuff, some high end production, good build experience, given that it's a buildable thing, you know, good figures as well. Yeah, this, this makes it worth it when they do this much stuff this well, this makes it worth it to pay those top dollar premium prices kind of sets the bar in a way, or at least reminds us of what the bar can be. Thank you very much for watching. Hope that you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you again soon.